Hi, and welcome to the Weekly Bowl. I'm Michael Sheets. And I'm Lydia Moynihan. Here's this week's school headlines. Spring 2016 Weekend Honors Program. This past weekend, AEI's Value and Capitalism Program partnered with the King's College to bring an intensive seminar on entrepreneurship and human flourishing to students from Christian schools. Our very own Professor Brenberg and Bethany Jenkins led core tutorials on business, design thinking, work, and faith. Going global, last week a couple of King students, including two from our team, got to volunteer for and attend the 16th annual Info Poverty World Conference at the United Nations. This conference hosts around 50 passionate speakers yearly who are dedicated to eradicating poverty from the earth and establishing global sustainability with the help of their meticulous research. Keep an eye out on social media for more volunteer opportunities. SVP Catherine Thompson has selected this year's cabinet members. Here's Grace with the scoop. Hello, I'm Grace Carls. This past year, the cabinet has done a wonderful job leading the school's activities and day-to-day -day operations. But next year's student body president, Catherine Thompson, has been busy at work choosing her own cabinet. Next year, the director of student events will be Michelle Linhart, who is replacing Mary Loziak. Director of finance will be Ollie Garrett, replacing Tim Stratton. Director of spiritual life will be Michael Martinez, replacing Spencer Kashmanian. Director of Communications will be Helen Healy, replacing Taylor Thompson. And finally, the Director of Student Organizations will be Christina Markakis, replacing Annalise Bourgeois. Best of luck to the new cabinet as they assume responsibility for the coming school year. King's impacting culture. In a progressive era that's always looking forward to tomorrow, it's easy to forget the past. But Southern Seminary Magazine calls Gre President Gregory Thornbury a countercultural time lord, one who encourages people to look beyond the whirlwind of day-to-day -day life. Thornbury shapes students to be culture makers in spheres of influence by stressing the value of education, virtue, morality, and cultural engagement. Make sure to read the article about President Thornbury. And make sure to mark your calendars for next Monday, April 25th. Come to the City Room at noon to hear Director of the Rutgers Center for the Philosophy of Religion, Dr. Dean Zimmerman, give a thought-provoking lecture called Causing the Cosmos. Also coming up, Fall Forward, Spring Back, Spring Formal is this Saturday at Midtown Loft and Terrace at 6 p.m. The theme is Old New York and formal attire is required. Come fashionably be dressed and ready to spring back into a timeless night. Enjoy cannolis, gelato on a stick, an open soda bar, and a photo booth. Buy tickets now at inventbrite.com. As we near the end of the semester, King Student's time in Midtown is also drawing to a close. All Midtown Vogue residents will be moving downtown to new financial district student housing as of this fall. Isabel gives us the details and a closing message from the girls who called the Vogue home. Yeah, I'm up at Brooklyn, now I'm down in Tribeca, right next to De Niro, but I'll be here forever. I'm the new Sinatra, and since I made it... Good afternoon, this is Isabel, and I am here at the Vogue, located at West 37th and Avenue of the Americas. The Vogue apartment buildings have housed King students for the past 12 years. This year, the house of QE1 and Barton lived at the Vogue, but King started by housing all guys here. In 2010, the boys' houses moved to Ludlow and the Lower East Side, and the houses of SBA and Barton took up residence in the Vogue. The very next year, QE1 joined Barton as SBA left. When the school met in the Empire State Building, residents at the Vogue and the Herald Towers could walk to class. Since moving to the FIDI, however, many students have had to make the daily commute to and fro their midtown apartments. Last summer, we moved the houses of Bonhoeffer, Churchill, and Lewis out of the Herald Towers to join us downtown. Now, at the end of the 2016 spring semester, we say our final goodbye to the Vogue. Starting this fall, the house of Barton and QB1 will move downtown to housing in 1 West and 90 Washington. Join me as I talk with a King student about her experience living here at the Vogue. Hey guys, my name is Elizabeth Kaufman. I'm a current sophomore here and I've been living at the Vogue for almost a year. My name is Kirsten Hippie. I am a transfer junior and this is my second year at the Vogue. Mm, loyal. Yeah. Here's some reasons why we love the Vogue. I love how central it is, like living in Midtown gets crazy, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I know that one time I was walking home, uh, I was I had some groceries in my hand, and all of a sudden Nick Jonas is singing a concert out on you know Herald Square, and that was a freebie. Um, <laughs> what's another reason I like the Vogue? Another reason I like the Vogue is, oh, I have another reason I don't like the Vogue. Another reason I don't like the Vogue. <laughs> we are in the Bermuda Triangle for Insomnia Cookies. They don't deliver here. Fish they Macaries does. It's another cookie place. The uh, front desk workers are very nice. Errol. Errol. Loyal. The view from the roof is amazing. 
If you want a good Instagram picture, look no more. <laughs> well, one time I was making cookies, because I love cookies, um, and they engulfed in flames. Oh shoot, and so pulled them out, and I was like, you know, apartment's filled with smoke, so I ran to the window, opened the suckers up, and my blinds just fell out onto 6th Avenue, like the whole thing. No one died, so don't worry. I had to tell Joy Gabert, she's, you know, housing advisor, and she was pretty upset with me because I had just dropped a spoon down the elevator shaft like two days prior to that. I'm sad to leave just because this is where I've lived since I've started Kings. I lived here for all of last year. I stayed here over the summer. <laughs> I wanted to stay at the Vogue. I'm like, I don't even like 90 Washington. Like, they're really small apartments, like a glorified hallway. No one wants to live in a hallway. <laughs> yeah, it's a little sad, but you know. Here's this week's city news. Urban downsizing? How often do we find ourselves wandering through the city and coming across the most charming cobblestone street or cozy neighborhood and wishing we could live there, even if for a day? For a small faction of New Yorkers, moving to such enchanting settings is becoming a reality, but with one catch, 350 square feet of living space. But these individuals don't mind. In their eyes, an inviting courtyard to call their own is more than sufficient in serving as a living room. But these little spaces come at no small price. One micro apartment in the West Village starts at around $600,000. England Day, New York. This Saturday, come to the Queen Elizabeth II Garden outside Hanover for a delightful garden party to commemorate all things English. Sing happy birthday to the Queen who turns 90 this Thursday. Dress up for a costume contest and show your Shakespeare in honor of the 400th anniversary of his death. Bring little ones you know for Lego building, face painting, and sing-alongs. Keep up with the Weekly Bull to get the scoop at school and make sure to tune in next week for our last episode of the season. Thanks for joining us.